always be sure to take time out when you're doing a project like this to just stand back and look at it. Look at what you've done. Look at what you'd like to improve. Look at what you like. Just take a little time out and check over your job. Make sure the build is going your way. And if it's not, you can make adjustments. Working on the tiny boat build today. We're getting the trolling motor and battery hooked up and installed. Foam, aluminum, and flooring installed. Back seat, and a little more work on the live well. If you haven't seen all the videos on this boat build and you want to, I'll leave a playlist in the description below. With nearly a unanimous vote, green cover for the live well. A better look at it for the live well. Hope everybody's happy with that. Battery retainers like this one are available at any auto parts store for about five bucks. Battery is installed and all hooked up. I have the circuit breaker, just double sided tape to the battery right there, piece of foam in the back. You will have to get a piece of angle iron, that's aluminum angle iron I use for the battery. You will have to get that, it doesn't come with that little kit I showed you earlier. This is what they look like on the other side. I did have to modify the brackets just a little bit for this to work out but I'm pleased with it. I think it looks pretty good. Inside of this compartment along with the battery will be the perfect place to put an onboard charger. Everything seems to be working out just great. The only thing I don't like is how long the shaft is right here. It's very long, so I'm going to cut it off after I get it in the water so I can see where it's going to land. I first have to adjust it down here, make sure everything's set, come back home after it's adjusted, and cut that off shorter. I don't like all that excess and that thing way up in the air like that. This controller is really nice. It's low profile. I meant to cut a hole in the floor over here for it and I forgot but again it's low profile so maybe I won't have to I'm gonna give it a try first before I do that one more thing this might become an issue right here I cannot stand that when you are cruising down the lake and hit some waves and that thing goes to bouncing around what I will most likely have to do after we cut it to size put a bracket underneath here somewhere to hold this head nice and sturdy in place so it doesn't do that trolling motor check it's done as far as I'm concerned for right now, let's move on to the next step. Just a few dabs of this Gorilla Snot glue and then the foam. It's the way I'm doing it. Doesn't make it the right way to do it, just makes it the way I'm doing it. Here we go now. So there's gonna be some rain noise outside. I often make videos when it's raining because I like to be outside when it's not. I put an arrow on all the foam marking the front position that way I don't get them mixed up when I go to glue them down here like this.
Hopefully this gives you a good view of what the foam looks like installed. And I'm just going to keep pressing it down to make sure the glue's sticking and it's flat. This is called Alumabrite and it's used to clean pontoons and stuff like that. I'm using it to etch this aluminum where that foam flooring goes so that it sticks real good. I won't be doing this other side that's going to have contact cement on it that sticks to the foam because I think it'll stick good enough without it. Pro tip, rinse out your little sprayer with water when you get done using it with the acid so it doesn't ruin it. This is what it looks like after I use the acid. The longer you keep it on there, the whiter this metal will get, the more porous it will get. Rinse it off with soap and water, you're ready to go. Previous videos I showed using a wheel, like a sanding disc and a wheel on the aluminum before I put the foam on. Anything to promote a mechanical adhesion, a good bond between the aluminum and your foam flooring. This is basically just contact cement. Put a real thin layer on the foam side because it'll kind of melt it a little bit. This metal side also has to be sprayed. Doing this so that the metal doesn't rub up against the boat metal, it'll just kind of glue it together. Less vibrations and don't want to wear the boat out trickiest and most difficult part right now doing this once it's down you cannot get it back up again that's it once it touches it's over with that contact cement is glued tight. I am very fortunate. Everything worked out good. Making sure it's all compressed good and that the glue is making good contact with the foam and the bottom of the boat where we glued it earlier. Feels good. No buckles or anything like that. I'm going to sharpen this drill bit, but what I'm doing is every six inches on these rails. I would love to think this doesn't need to be said, but when you're drilling your holes, be careful not to drill through the bottom of your boat. The rain has gotten worse. I just wanted to show you where I put these two pieces together, how I did it. I cut them like slotted so the floor could be flat there. I'm going to just fill these little spots in with glue to make it nice and level. Not really that important. This is only 16 gauge aluminum by the way. So it's really thin, but glued to that foam, it's really strong and feels tough and sturdy. This is the flooring I was telling you about, eBay flooring. It's like a quarter inch thick. Feels nice. It has an adhesive back here. You just unpeel it and it sticks to your boat. As long as it's prepped good, it should work well. I am not the best at cutting this stuff out. One thing I did learn, you need to be careful and make sure you center this stuff. The best way to do that is to put a line right here on your boat in the very center. Put a line on this stuff in the very center and line those up and work off of that. These boats are 100% not square, so you will run into issues if you're thinking they're square and you're going to cut them out square. It doesn't work that way. The best thing to cut it with is scissors if you can get by with that, but you can't always. You will have to use a razor blade in some spots, and it's difficult to cut. It wants to ball up and do funky stuff, but it can get done. If I can do it, you can do it.
This is just a scrap piece. When you cut this stuff with the scissors or whatever, you want to cut it off to an angle like that. Or that's the way I like to do it. You put an angle on it, cut it down through there. Even if you do it with a razor blade, you do that. Or I do it. Then, what you have is this top edge is very thin. By doing this, this top edge will push up against your boat and make it cleaner looking, like not as jagged. I've glued down this further part of the carpet deal here, the foam, and on this side I did not, and the only excess I have left is on this very edge. I think I'm gonna glue this thing down closer and then deal with this edge, cut it off with a razor blade against the boat. There it is, another step done. The floor is glued down, so all the flooring's done now from front to back. None of it is perfect, it's not supposed to be as far as I know because I've never gotten it perfect but it looks good it's killing me what would the seat look like back here in the back with the two seats installed how would this boat look let's throw it on and find out this swivel is a 15 degree angle so your seat kinda kicks back a little bit and there's a label on it that says front top right here so you need to make sure it's on the front and top part of the seat like that I did have to grind out these holes a little bit waller them out because they didn't fit exactly perfect when you pay 16 bucks for something like this it's not going to fit why not just use the post type you know the kind that slide down in your boat the pedestal and it's removable and all that because I don't want it I don't have any reason to move these seats around and I hate worrying about my seats blowing out of the boat going down the road with a trailer so these will be on here and secured to stay So let's give her a sit and see how it is. Ah, and I already know. These seats are sweet. They are what you call big, sometimes large, or even fat pimping. I mean, they're nice. These are nice. Mm. Oh, look here, I'm gonna stick my feet up on the live well. I might even change the angle so you can see that. Hold on, I'll, I'll show you. Yeah, I took my shoes off. I don't want to get the floor all dirty. This top's not bolted down, as you can see, but, oh! This right here is a perfect example of how the Kentucky Yankee takes care of his buddies. One thing I should have done, and I can do it later, but put a piece of metal on top of that thin boat area there where the seat's going to go, kind of to brace it, make it stronger. It's a little flexing back and forth a little bit right now, but... If it doesn't tear out, it'll be fine. If it does, then I'll put the metal under there. I'm very curious about our live well, so I hooked up the aerator, and I put it a hose into a bucket of water. It'll suck it up in there. Let's just see if it's going to overflow out of this pipe, or if it's going to get too filled. I have a couple different plans if it doesn't just work the first time. It is not working, and it could be because this pipe is up above where it needs to be. If I had it down in the boat coming out, it may work. I'm not sure. Plan number two was to put this bilge pump inside the tank. The ideal here is after it's filled up, I flip the other switch, and this will come on, and it will circulate the water. I could have them both on, so there'll be water coming in, water going out, and I could put a rheostat, as some folks called it, or a... A ball valve right here on the hose where I could regulate how much water goes out to make everything work evenly. Also, this bilge pump, I can turn the aerator out and empty the live well. You can see the water coming out of the bilge pump right there and the water being sucked up through the hose. Look in here and I'll show you. Let me get you close up, guys. Hold on. So I've been watching it quite closely and it's not moving. It's staying right at the top of the bilge pump. 
So it's about an even flow in and an even flow out. I like this. I think this is the way I'm going to go. And I will put a plug in the bottom of it too, just to drain it completely out. I'm just going to let this sit here and run for a while to see if it keeps the level at level. This is the best way to recirculate this water, I think. There's only one downfall, and that is the battery power running two pumps at once. But small tank recirculating several times a trip, I don't think it's going to kill it. Okay, and after a little while here, the bilge pump is faster than the fill pump. This could take a little bit of fine tuning, but so far I really like it. I think this is a route we're going to take. That's going to be it for this one. I'm going to get some fittings to finish this up. Next upload, I got to do the electrical. I have a primer, which is kind of like an electric choke. I got a starter relay we need to hook up. Key switch, all that stuff. After that, we're very close to getting this thing on the lake and giving it its first voyage. If you just stumbled on my channel, there's a whole series of videos on this boat build. Check them out. Thanks for watching. Everybody be safe on the water. We'll see you next time.